Hello programmers, my name is Lynn and today I will teach you about lists in Python. By the end of this video you will understand the meaning of a list and why it's considered very flexible. You will understand the rules and the feature of a list. You will understand many creative additional methods in Python and understand what is a nested if. And of course we will apply all of these me methods into our Jupyter notebook and I'll give you a mini quiz at the end of this video too test your knowledge. So let's begin. First of all, what is a list? A list is an ordered sequence that can hold a variety of object types. And what I mean by an object type is like floating points, integers, strings, these are all can be held in a list. They use square brackets and commas to separate objects in a list. So here's a little example. And uh, lists support indexing and slicing. So if you didn't watch our previous video and you don't know what our indexing and slicing is, make sure to check it out. I will link it in the eye in the corner as well as in the description box. Then lists are nested. And we're going to learn more about that later on. Now lists are considered extremely flexible in Python for two main reasons. One is that they have no fixed size, meaning you don't have to specify how big a list will be before you start coding it. And they have no fixed type data, meaning that you don't have to, in a list, not everything should be a string. It can be a mix of strings and floating points and integers. So let's hop into our Jupyter notebook and explore some of these concepts. And let's learn a bit about coding. So our Jupyter Notebook is where we code on and it is very good for beginners as it shows you input and output and makes you understand about what is happening to your code. So I'm going to launch it from my Anaconda Navigator and if you don't know how to download Jupyter Notebook or you don't have it already, make sure to click the eye in the corner or the description box and check out that video that we filmed some time ago. Anyway, I'm on my Anaconda Navigator now, and I'm going to press Launch Jupyter Notebook. I'll see you there. All right, guys, as you can see, we are on our Jupyter Notebook right now, and you can see that we have blocks for us to code on. And let's start with assigning a list to the variable. Lynn, oh, actually, here, my underscore list. And we have to use equal, and then we need square square brackets inside them I will put five six seven and eight all right and let's try running it let's see if Python can now identify this it knows that um, my list is equal to five six seven and eight and as you can see this is our input this is our output and we just created a list of integers but as we know, lists can actually hold more than just integers. They can hold strings and floating points and way more. So um, I'm going to teach you a function that you can use to count how many items are in a sequence of lists. And it's called the LEN. So what you have to do is open up the brackets and inside it, put the name of your list. So my list, and let's run it, four, perfect. If we add more items into our list and run it, it changes. So let's check out some other features from lists. So I'm gonna teach you another really cool method. And as we know that lists are extremely flexible and you can actually use a plus sign to add an item to a list. Although this doesn't change it, the original list, you can do that by reassigning or by an alternative method I'm gonna teach you later on. So what we're gonna do right now is do, uh, I don't wanna change my list permanently. I just want to tap temporarily. So I'm gonna put len list plus square brackets and inside it, I'm going to add 
Mm, 10. Again, this is temporarily. Oh, I didn't define that. Okay, we'll use my list. Perfect. My underscore list plus 10. And now if you want to run it again, because you don't want it to change your original one, perfect. Another thing that you can do is multiply. So if you want to duplicate the items in a list, and it, you can do that this way. My underscore list times this one here is used as a multiplication sign in Python. And you can put times two for duplicating it. And we have everything times two, times three, you have it times three. Again, if you want to run your list, nothing changes. It's temporarily. So these are some of the um, methods. And we're going to learn a lot more. But let's clear this out so that we have more space to do some of our other special methods that we can use for a list. So let me clear this out, and I'll see you in a second. All right, guys, we are now in a on our fresh page on our Jupyter Notebook. And we're going to take a look at some of the special methods that can be used in not just lists, in anything in Python. So let's create a new list of my favorite animals. And I'm going to call that new L for short, and equal square brackets. And my favorite animals, I really like dogs. They're super cute. I also like, oh, make sure to add on your apostrophes and commas to separate all of your animals. I really like cats as well, they're so fluffy. Hmm, I think horses are pretty cool too. I can't remember any for now, but we can put these for now. Now I'm going to teach you one of my favorite methods or functions and it's called the append. And this is the alternative way I was talking about earlier on. It is used to permanently add an item to the end of the list. So let, uh, before on this video, we used a uh, plus sign to add it, but if it was temporarily. So append me is to add something or an item to a list for permanently. So let's use it because I just remembered I absolutely love flamingos. They're super cute and I love the pink color. So let's use the append function. So I'm going to put the name of my list, new L. I'm going to put dot append. And inside it, I will put the name of my favorite animal. So, flamingos. All right, let's run it. New L. Look, it is it is now one of my um, lists. It's in my list now. And it is added at the end, so that's perfect. All right. Now, I just remembered that one of my other favorites is fishes. So let's put new l dot append, open up the brackets, and add fishes. They, they are really good swimmers, so I really like them. So now let's try it out again. Perfect. Okay, I just remembered that when I was younger, my, all of my fishes died. So I don't think I would probably like fishes when I was younger because they also eat so I thought they, I used to think that they eat me. So maybe I don't like fishes anymore. So we can use a new function called pop. And it is, it is used to remove or pop off an item depending on the index. So if you don't understand what is indexing and slicing, you have to go check out our previous video. We talked about them and we mentioned a lot of important stuff that will help you in your coding journey. So make sure to check it out. Anyway, let's use the pop function now to remove fishes off my list. So what we're going to do is put the name of my list, new L, and dot pop, and brackets. Inside the brackets, I have to put the index of fishes. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. The index of fishes is 4. So here we go. And let's check out my list now fish is no longer one of them perfect now um i want my list to be for uh, to be in descending order i want it to be listed in a descending order 
and luckily we have another function which is called reverse so let's try it out so let's put the name of my list new l and let's put dot reverse and brackets empty brackets are fine and let's run new l flamingo with horses cats and dogs perfect a b c d e f g h cool all right now that that is done we're going to move on to nesting list so i'll see you after i clean my notebook see you all right guys now what is a nested list i kept this for the end because now that you understand all of the other functions that we learned nest a nested list is basically a uh, it consists of a list inside a list. So it's basically a list inside a list. And you just create as many normal lists as you want and just assign them to a variable. And that's it. And you can use all the other functions that we learned, such as append and pop off and all of them. Now, I'd like to test your knowledge about today's topic. I'm going to give you three multiple choice questions and the answers will also be displayed, but you'll have to pause the video and write it in the comment section and I'll, I will correct it for you. So question number one. Lists can have multiple object types. Is that true or is that false? Pause the video, think about it and unpause it when you're ready. All right, you got it? Yes, the answer is true. As I said before, lists can have multiple object types such as string, integers, and floating points, and they can be all in the same list together. Question number two. If the list dogs, cats, birds, what is the result of list one? This is a bit tricky, so think about it carefully. Is it cats? Is it cats and birds? Is it birds? Is it dogs and cats? Pause the video, think about it, and unpause it when you're ready. The answer is cats, birds. So this is a question linked to our previous video, which is about indexing and slicing. And of course, they are used in lists. And I did a different one while explaining on the Jupyter Notebook. But this is a bit trickier. And question number three and the final answer. If list is equal to cats, dogs, birds, what is the result of list.pop? Is it birds? Is it dogs? Is it cats? Pause the video, think about it, and unpause it when you're ready. All right, the answer is birds because we said that um, the indexing is for when, they, we, when we don't specify what, which one, birds will always be the, the, the last one, will always be the one that will get deleted or popped off. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned a lot. And I, make sure to give it, this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe in order to join our family in order to become a programmer one day. And if you want to get notified every time we upload a new video so that you can be first, Turn the notification bell on to get notified. Alright guys, thank you. Keep bro programming and I'll see you guys next time on Programming Kids. Bye for now.